Hello, hello, new viewers, and welcome to the first video in the History for the Classroom series. This series will cover broad historical topics in a short, give or take 10 minutes, format for teachers to utilize for lessons. In light of current events in the world, the first topic to be covered will be the history of Ukraine. A proud country in Eastern Europe that has a rich and vibrant history stretching back thousands of years. The recognizably Ukrainian culture would begin in roughly the 800s AD. This early history, that of the Kievan Rus, is important for any number of reasons. Perhaps most importantly, as the Kievan Rus are the forefathers to not just Ukraine, but also Belarus and Russia. Don't think the name Russia didn't come from them. This was a loose confederation, or federation, for lack of a better term, of various independent principalities. These early principalities were likely, though there is some argument on this subject, ruled by a people called the Varangians. These were, in simplest terms, Vikings who went south instead of west. Scandinavians who moved into what is now Ukraine and intermingled with the existing Slavic population. The most famous ruler of the Rus, however, is arguably Vladimir the Great. Born in 958, Vladimir would be roughly 30 years old when, in 988 AD, he converted to Christianity. This symbolized the conversion of the Rus themselves, though that was a somewhat lengthy process. Vladimir himself converted to the Byzantine flavor of Christianity, as the Byzantine Empire remained a strong force to the south and the most influential Christian state in the lands of the Rus. With the conversion to Christianity, the Kievan Rus would continue on as a strong regional power, though they were arguably never unified in the modern sense of the term. The various small principalities, city-states, basically, would continually war amongst themselves, fighting conflicts over trade, land, and other such things regularly. Often, these were wars fought for the control of the city of Kiev itself that lends its name to the center of the society. Even so, the Kievan Rus would endure, if weaker, until the 1200s AD. That is, of course, when the Mongol invasions arrived. These invasions crippled the Rus and destroyed the Federation for good. Individual principalities would survive, independent or controlled by the Mongols. Kiev itself would be burned to the ground, though, in the year 1240 AD. In the aftermath of these invasions, the Rus would eventually unify once more, at least in Ukraine, into the short-lived Kingdom of Ruthenia. This kingdom, in its own right, would eventually be absorbed by first the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and then the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. This period, lasting from about the mid-1300s to the mid-1700s, would see the Ruthenians, the Ukrainians, as part of the Commonwealth. One of the most important parts, actually, for then, as now, Ukraine was a large breadbasket for Europe. Fertile soil would provide much in the way of crops, and eventually, horsemen. Generally, however, the Ukrainians were treated poorly by the Polish. Their peasants, that being poor farmers, would be turned into serfs. Functionally slaves at its worst, and honestly not far off from that at its best. With the rise of the Russian Empire, however, the Ukrainians would soon find themselves as part of another rising power. In fact, Ukrainians and Cossacks, the latter being skilled horsemen that require a video all on their own, became valuable tools in the war between Russia and Poland. Eventually, the Russians would take the land of Ukraine for themselves, though the Cossacks would fight on all sides of these wars. 
against the Ottoman Empire that had replaced the Byzantines to the south, against the Polish, who were ruling them, against the Ukrainians, who lived alongside them, and even against the Russians themselves. Cossack power would largely be broken in the aftermath of the Battle of Poltava, though. That was fought on Ukrainian soil between the Russians and the Swedish. Another topic for a future video, perhaps. The history of Ukraine under the Russian Empire, then, is largely similar to that under the Polish. Serfs would continue on as they had, Ukraine itself would be a relatively peaceful part of the empire, save for the Crimean War against the British. Crimea, those of you who have heard of it, has always been a strategic location, and while geographically connected to Ukraine, was part of Russia on a political level, for most of its time as part of the greater Russian state. This is rather important for later. It would not be until the end of World War I that a formal Ukrainian state would be formed. The Ukrainian People's Republic was arguably the first Ukrainian state, not a Ruthenian or Rus state. However, from the moment this state was founded in the aftermath of the collapse of the Russian Empire, it was a state at war. It was at war with other Ukrainians and with the Russians, both pro- and anti-Soviet. Ukraine would fight its own civil war alongside the Greater Russian Civil War, with the People's Republic and the other factions eventually falling to the Soviet Union. It does remain a source of pride for the modern Ukraine, though, and a lasting part of Ukrainian nationalism. It was, after all, the first Ukrainian state. Moving on, as part of the Soviet Union, Ukraine would suffer dearly between the end of the Civil War and the death of Stalin. The Holodomor, an arguable genocide deserving a video all on its own, saw the death of millions from starvation. This terrible suffering would continue into the Second World War, where some of the worst fighting took place on Ukraine's soil, as well as the Holocaust continuing where the Holodomor had left off. Ukrainian partisans, resistance fighters, fought fiercely and bravely against both the Germans and the Soviets, though this often led to even more suffering for the poor people on the ground. With the end of that war, however, and the death of Stalin, Ukraine would begin to recover, slowly but surely. Under Nikita Khrushchev and his successors, Ukraine will become a center of industry and technology. In fact, several quote-unquote Russian technological advances are actually Ukrainian in origin. This includes even certain aspects of the Soviet nuclear programs. Though this did end up seeing the Chernobyl disaster happen. A nuclear accident that Ukraine is still feeling the after effects of even so many years later. In the general collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, Ukraine would once more become independent. The current Ukrainian Republic was actually initially friendly to Russia, even giving up their nuclear arsenal. However, that relationship has cooled as Russia became decidedly more and more authoritarian. In the interests of avoiding this fate, Ukraine has moved towards the West and out of the Russian political orbit. This would culminate in the Euromaidan Revolution, a pro-democracy, pro-West, and pro-EU movement. This would not end well as it saw Russia move into Ukraine to seize the Crimea on the flimsy pretext of it always being part of Russia, Khrushchev having gifted it to Ukraine during the Cold War. Eventually, this conflict would escalate into Russia supporting separatist movements in the Donbass, region of Ukraine. That conflict would burn off and on until this year, as the video is recorded, when the Russians fully invaded Ukraine in February. That is a topic for another video, however. We will end here as a background of Ukraine in general. 
More detailed videos on many topics in this video will come in due time. For now, thank you for watching and I hope that this helps my fellow teachers in their lessons.